If you as a team decide not to have the instruments on the dentist's side, then we have to be able to exchange our instruments in a very safe way, in a very efficient way, so that the dentist is just looking at the tooth and the nurse is able to pick the instruments up and hand them to him and retrieve them. Now to do this, the nurse will have to have the instruments positioned within arm's reach. If they're any further away, it's going to just be very irritating for her to keep twisting, turning and leaning. So we need to look at the surgery design, where the instruments can be placed so that she can pick them up, use them, pass them to the dentist and return them to the tray without having to move her posture. Not everybody's going to be able to do this and redesign a surgery immediately. So you have to think out of the box and maybe use a drawer to put the tray in or a Mayo trolley just behind the patient's head. Uh, so you have to compromise a little bit. In a brand new surgery, this is what we'd go for. For the purposes of this video, we can't do everything 100% cross-infection control. So Sally and I are not going to be wearing masks so that we can talk to you. We won't be using our dental light because obviously that's going to interfere with the filming. When I pass the instruments across to Martin, I'm going to hold them in exactly the way that I can place them into his hands and know that he doesn't need to adjust them at all. So I'm holding the mirror at the far end so I can place it into his fingers, ready for him to hold it in the position he needs to. And again with the probe, I'm holding it so he can hold it in a pen grip close to the end. I check the tooth because I haven't taken my vision off the tooth at all. And I actually don't see those instruments being passed to me and they can be taken away safely and then pass back to me if I need to do it again. So we've done our cavity. We've done all the drilling that we need to. Uh, now I just need to check the cavity really with an excavator or a probe. So Sally's gonna pass me the instruments. Now to make this a viable procedure to do, the nurse will need to have the instruments at arm's reach. So at somewhere, a work surface will need to be made available so that you can place the instruments so that they're easy to pick up and pass across. So these are double-sided instruments, which I just flick around if I need it. And if I want to probe, just to have a look. Thank you. OK, so uh, I think now we're ready to fill the cavity. Having done the cavity, checked it, we now want to put our band system on. Lots of different band systems, but we'll use this one today. Put it onto the mesial of that five. Sally will give me the wedge. So we'll get the wedge in there. If you're going to use a, a clamp on that. The thing to really notice is that I've got nothing on my side. It's all coming at me here from the nurse's side, so I can just concentrate on getting the band into the right shape. So now, depending on what system you use, but we'll just demonstrate using etch, prime and bond. So we might etch the tooth. We'll do a pretend here because this is a video. This obviously would have to be washed off and dried after the appropriate timing. Then I might put my primer on. But you'll notice that I'm actually not moving my head at all. Everything's being passed to me and I'm just looking at the cavity and keeping my eye exactly where I want to for operating. So we'll dry that, just evaporate that off. Sal, please, for me. Thank you. And then we'll put our bond on. And then Sally can do the light cure. Again, I don't have the light cure on my side. There's absolutely no reason for it to be here. It's going to be on the nurse's side. And now, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing an amalgam, we'll show you one particular technique for doing amalgam. You can choose your own. But the principle is my eyes are on the tooth. Everything's passed to me. And I'll condense it. I'm not looking up at all. And once we finish condensing, I might want a ball ended burnisher just to do a little bit more work on it. Then I might have a probe. You'll notice that Sally's anticipating what I need in advance of me really needing it. And then we would take the band off in exactly the same way, which I'll demonstrate in a moment after using composites. So if it was a composite, again, whatever technique you use, uh, we'll put some composite in, having done our etch prime and bond already. We might use a gun, put a little bit in, pack it a little bit, and then we'll light cure. Same thing, might put a little bit more in there. Now, if you choose to do it, putting little bits in with a probe, exactly the same technique would apply. It's just coming from the nurse's side. 
Having done all of that, we now need to get rid of all this stuff that's in the mouth. So we want to take the uh, band off and it goes to the nurse's side. We then take the wedge out, it gets boring, it goes to the nurse's side. We take the band off and it goes to the nurse's side. Now we can just finish it off in any way you want to do it. There are lots of different ways of passing instruments and you'll develop your own way uh, between you and your dentist, but this method seems to work with all of the instruments we pass. I will pick the instrument up. I'm using the non-working end. I know Martin wants to hold the instrument in a pen-like grip, so I don't want to hold the instrument in that place. So I'm going to grip the instrument at the end, but very firmly, because I need to be able to place that into his hand without him looking up. And that's very crucial that you're very firm with the placement of it. When we're exchanging instruments, I'm doing exactly the same again, but I'm taking the bottom instrument and we've got a parallel exchange going on and then dropping the instrument down into his fingers. So just slowly doing that, I'm taking, I'm actually transferring the instrument back up because it's a slightly firmer way of passing than keeping it in your little finger. Uh, so I'm changing and placing. And if we need to move on to the next instrument, I'm able to just reach it, pass it across, and the same technique applies. We know this technique works for all procedures in dentistry. And of course, everybody out there does their procedures differently. So if you come on one of our courses, we can teach you individually that's tailor-made for you or come into your practice and do it there and then. But I use it for everything, even implants, when I have either four-handed or six-handed dentistry. And in this case, there is something slightly different because I might want my nurse to actually stay in the mouth, retracting the flap and aspirating. But I can just pick up an instrument very easily, come round to the patient, do whatever I want to do, and then go back again. So I hope that we've established that you can do a very safe instrument exchange between dentist and nurse. I don't need anything on this side. I know dentists are control freaks and they like to pick up their own instruments and they're not sure what they want at any one time. But with a little bit of communication, you can learn between you that Sally will almost know ahead of me because she's been working with me for so long what instrument I want. And I just sit there, look at the tooth and that instrument's handed to me. What about your side, Sal? Well, I think the added benefit you get, along with the cross-infection control, which makes it a lot easier for the nurse if she's got control of the instruments her side, is that it's just a lot more interesting for the nurse. She can see what's going on in the mouth and feels part of the team. And in fact, Sally often says, because she's sitting in a different position to me, eyeline-wise, she'll say, have a look at the distal of this bit of tooth. I think there's something there that you might need to look at. And it's great to have that teamwork between us. Patients really appreciate it. Having seen our instrument exchange video, and you can have a look at the aspiration and retraction video, then if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this and actually practice it yourself on, and be taught on a one-to-one -one basis, then why not come on one of our courses? Please look us up at our website at dynamicdentistry.co.uk or email us at info at dynamicdentistry.co.uk. We can also actually come to your practice and train the whole practice in how to do these techniques.